So it's only been two weeks since George Farmer was in the studio doing a big trim up on the Asian Fish Aquarium behind me, and it's already grown back. So since George came and trimmed the aquarium, you can see behind me an Asian fish aquarium about two and a half, three weeks ago, something like that now. It's growing back massively in such a short space of time. Now this sounds great, but I'm not one who likes trimming plants a lot. I just hate that sort of unnatural look that it gives after you've done it. But there's a way we can get around that by trimming it in a certain way. So what I mean by that is that since George did the trimming of this, there were some areas that were just sort of longer than others, which as you can see now has grown in sort of like a, a staggered effect, which means that I can just trim the ones that are sort of poking over the top and leave the ones below, and then we'll just get more of a natural look rather than a squared off sort of cutting look. The same applies everywhere, look really, see? Some of these pointing up here, and the limb, the feeler, there's some just random bits on its own. So if you trim those off, but keep all these really nice looking bushy ones that we've got everywhere else, we should keep that natural look and not just get like a squared off look. That's why I hate trimming them. I just don't like it looking all square and perfect. And let's face it, it takes weeks before it gets back to normal again, like now. So I'd rather just, as I go, trim off the odd one, two, three or four, probably more than that, and then just keep going from there. Yeah, so just to be clear to you, it's not that I'm lazy and I can't be bothered to trim them, because let's face it, it doesn't take long to trim some plants, but I just don't like the effect that it gives after you've done it. The tank just looks artificial to me, and I like having a few things growing like randomly here and there. So I've placed a load of the trimmings in some nice fresh water there because I've got a plan for those escape coming up. I want to do a really realistic Ember Tetra aquarium. Ember Tetras are just like awesome little fish and when I first got into the hobby I think they're about like the third fish I bought and they make any escape look really good as well. They're so small and cute, really easy, really, really easy to care for and they just seem to go really well at any type of aquarium as well. But most of all they look great against green plants and that's lucky because I got lots of them. So I think I managed to achieve what I set out to there. It still looks natural. There isn't like squared off sections here and that, but it still looks neat and good. It doesn't look scraggly or unkept, I don't think anyway. It looks really natural. And if you come around here, this is my favorite angle, this angle here, or side if you like. Look at that, all the way down. Looks so good, didn't it? And as I suggested last time in the vlog with George, that I wanted this to start sort of creeping across and carpeting and you can see there that it, it really is it's doing it everywhere all across there and that side as well so eventually that'll actually cover that whole area that looks so good then oh back out and yeah coming around here you can see that it's looking really good as well it's, it's quite straight actually i didn't mean to do that it's a bit of a coincidence i mean it doesn't matter it'll sort of do its own thing anyway but looking really good nice little pockets of the pearl weed there right in the middle this is pearl weed by the way then we've got the Altanamphra, Reniki, that stuff just peeking through, looking good. We've still got the limb, the feel of the top. These are the ones that were trimmed last time have regrown. That's why they look so vibrant. They look really good. So all those ones I've just trimmed off will grow out again and be nice and vibrant. Oh, we've got a stray one. <laughs> I'll get that planted again in a minute. But yeah, overall, I think that's looking really good. Now, back to the question and why you click this video. Why do all my plants grow so fast and look so good? So one of the first things I'd like to point out is the photo period. So most people recommend that you put your tank lights on for about six to eight minutes. <laughs> hours. Obviously, I meant six to eight hours. That's all well and good when you've got a high-tech system with high-powered light coming in. I don't tend to use high powered lights and if I do I keep them a certain distance away from the plants or the water itself. So I actually leave my lights running for 11, 12, 13 hours. At the moment they're set to 14, most of them are, yeah all of them are. If I notice that there's some algae coming on I might cut one of them back, it might just be that, that particular setup 
can get algae easier. I don't know. Sometimes you can set two tanks up exactly the same. One of them gets a bit of algae, one doesn't. I don't know. It's just how it works. I think if you're trying to experiment and find that perfect level for you, 12 hours photo period is a good thing to aim for if you're using sort of low light or medium light levels and if you're using easy to grow plants as well. I know it's hard to understand what's low light, what's high light, but you know, that's just something you're gonna have to work out yourself from experimenting trial and error. Again, if you start to notice algae, the first thing I would do is slightly lift the light if you can. If you've got a strip of LED, then you can cover up some of the LEDs with some black electrical tape or something like that just to dim the lights if it hasn't got a dimming option. You know, there's many ways of doing it, but Overall, I found that slow and steady wins the race in terms of plant growth. So what I mean by that is not that the plants grow slow. I just mean that you're not trying to hammer it with nutrients and light. I, I give it sort of lower light and lower nutrients, but for like longer periods. And I just think that's why my plants tend to grow really well. And over the past few years, I've had really good success with it. You know, some of the stuff I do in here goes against what is being told to everyone, but I just find that it's worked really well for me. So the second reason why my plants grow really fast and really well is because I tend to use easy grow plants and this stops algae buildup. Easy grow plants grow really fast, stems mainly. Stems grow really fast and in doing so they use up nutrients in the water column. Why is this good? Well, if there's no nutrients in the water column, then algae won't have any food. If it doesn't have any food, it can't grow. So first and foremost, get your lighting levels right. Once you've got them right, you can increase your photo period to like 12 hours. And then once your plants start growing in really well, you shouldn't really get much algae. And if you do see a little bit, that's when you can put in some algae eaters to try and combat it. Again, they won't cure a big problem, but they'll keep little bits at bay. I'm talking Amano shrimp, Otto Sinclis, Siamese algae eaters. Those are my three favorites. And then I tend to put in a lot of ram's horn snails as well. I know neurites are really good. I had them in the past. I haven't had them for a while actually. I think I might get some of those for, for some of my tanks. So I've come across a bit of a problem in the discus aquarium. There's a little bit of cyanobacteria that's covering the sand layer at the bottom. Now you tend to get some cyanobacteria where like sand meets the glass. So sometimes at the front of your tank, you can just see it on that little layer that's going beneath the glass. Does that make the, the foreground, you know, right? The, the strip. Ugh. This bit here, look, sometimes you get some cyano creeping down and it always seems to be where the sand is touching the glass. You see it there because obviously it's up against the glass. I'm sure it's on the base as well, but obviously you can't see that. Anyway, everything else in the discus aquarium is doing absolutely brilliant. There's no cyano on anything else, but have a look here, look. Let me zoom right in for you. So it's just like a, like a thin dusting of the cyano on top of the sand that's built up over the past three days, I'd say. So I think I'm just gonna sort of siphon all that out, move it around, see what it does. If that clears it up, great. If it doesn't, then I've actually got some of this product, which I've used before, Ultra Life Blue Green Slime Stain Remover. It works an absolute treat. You do have to stay on top and keep using it and then redosing every few months or so, but it does re work really well. But I don't know if that's gonna be necessary. I mean, it could be the case that this sand is just not suited for being a thin layer on the, on the, on the bottom glass panel. So I might just have to find like a thicker sand, which I've used in the bowl aquarium. The bowl aquarium's got like a, a more coarse sand. I don't know if the camera picks up the size grains. Should do. Come on. You know, the bowl's like making it look funny. There we go, so it's like a, a decent sized grain. Whereas obviously this one here look, is, is much, much, much finer. Probably half the si grain size. I don't know if that makes a difference, but I've never seen cyano build up like that on, on more gravelly sort of substrates. So a bit of a pantry update for you guys. Many of you have been asking. So his tank is looking insane. Look at all of that growth. But I've just fed him, by the way, so there's a worm right there. He chopped half of it up with his mouth. Um, yeah, so he's, look, nice big red gills. There's still something wrong with him. I don't know exactly what it is, um, but he's pooping fine but he doesn't swim anymore. And I took him to the vets because I was worried it might be some kind of impaction, but there's nothing to come up on the scan. I mean, obviously vets don't know anything about axolotls to be fair, but um, 
I don't know what's wrong with him. So I've reached out to someone who's like, well, not local to me, a few hours away. He's gonna take Pancho off my hands for a while to observe him and see if he can see what, if there's anything he can do. He's bred axolotls and has kept a lot of them. So he'll know if there's any sort of issues that I'm not, not seeing. So um, uh, hopefully he'll be okay. So it is a little bit of a strange one because Pancho's still eating very regularly and pooping very regularly as well. So like I feed him one day and then two days to one and a half days later, big poo and rinse and repeat. Not rinse, just repeat. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, it's a mystery. He seems fine, just not swimming. So hopefully someone with more experience can you know, take a look at this and just see if there's anything they can do or if there's anything even wrong. Maybe just doesn't like swimming, I don't know. Either way, we've still got plenty of other stuff going on. New build video at the weekend. Hopefully you're looking forward to that. Gonna be a cool Ember Tetra tank. Ember Tetras are awesome. They're one of my favorite fish. I know I say that about every fish. <laughs> I think we all do, don't we? But as you all know, we've got all those new tanks coming in the new studio. Loads of equipment stuff is arriving. This is gonna be so good. <laughs>